Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for having me here on this very important and very interesting subject of robotic knee replacement. It's indeed bringing about a paradigm shift, and we can, yes, of course, call it as a new kid on the block. I am Vebha Bagaria. I am the director of the orthopedics at the Sir H and Reliance Foundation Hospital in Mumbai, and that's my hospital. And that's uh, about me. If anyone is interested, you can read more about me on the hospital website www.rfhospital.org. Now we all know that this shift is happening at various fronts, and you will see that we are seeing these changes happening in our day-to-day -day life. Whether it is about the robotic knee replacement, the flying vehicles, or the way we train our students, our fellows, and we keep pushing our frontiers. In newer and newer dimensions. However, we all do realize that there is a need for improvement in healthcare. And when I talk about the total knee replacement, that there is around 25% dissatisfaction rate in some of our patients, and they are primarily related to the knee stability and proprioception. And this is more so true in our high demand patients. And we have also been aware that our knee replacements in certain situations are not doing as well, and they are failing. And there are two important causes of this, and they are instability and malalignment, and that's where the technology pitches in. So, if we look at the uh, robotic technology, over years it has made a difference from conventional instruments to the early balancing tools, the navigation tool, to the robotics, and today we talk about the handheld robotics, and that's how a typical operating room looks like. So, if you look here, there is a robot which works. As a surgeon, we stand. There is a console, and of course, there are screens to tell us what we are doing. Coming back to the subject of total knee replacement, we know that there are mechanical goals and there are certain additional goals. So, as a surgeon, our mechanical goal is to restore the alignment, preserve or restore the joint line, balance the knee properly, and have a good patellofemoral tracking. Now. Uh, when we are when we, we when we graduate as a arthroplasty surgeon these are the holy grail i mean if we achieve a good alignment if we can balance the well, knee joint well restore the joint line and give a good patellofemoral dimension uh, the tracking we are all sorted of course they come with an additional goals like that we want to minimize the surgical time we don't want to have any infections patient should be painless the hospital stay should be decreased and all this should reflect as a happy surgeon and a happy team. And of course, we can't uh, keep money out of it. We want something which is cost effective. So, when we look at any technology driven surgery, there are three key steps. One is the preoperative planning, then there is intraoperative uh, assessment, and then finally executing it to the perfection. I use this CORI instrument, uh, instrumentation set for robotic knee surgeries, and this is the console on the left hand side, there is a small tray which contains um, all the uh, instrument that is required by me and the heart of all the operation is this drill which is handheld robotic. The steps in robotic include setting up, registration, planning the implant, planning the bone cuts, validating what you have done, doing the trial implantation, revalidate it, final component cementation and then closure once you are happy with your execution. In Cori system, the registration is image free. We plan according to the patient's geometry or patient's morphology. We then proceed with a robotic assisted preparation and finally confirm. I am going to show you a short animation of how it is done. This is the console here. So, these are the infrared eyes which track all the trackers. So, after the incision is made, we put pins on the upper and the lower bone, the femur and the tibia and tie it. So, these serve as a alignment guide. This tells us where we are just like GPS and then we have satellites, we have these things. Then comes the trackers, these are the trackers that we have put and then from time to time we keep checking these trackers whether we are, whether they have moved during the operation or not. We next collect certain important points. So, you will see that I am correcting medial malleolus and the lateral malleolus. Then we correct the knee center, the femur center 
and the hip center by doing this is movement. We collect a range of movement, we see how the knee moves through the range of movement here and then we kind of paint, it is more like a kid painting the femur. So, it, you see that the, we are generating a real time picture of the bone that we are going to work on. It is called as handle painting of the femur and the tibia and this is the heart of the operation. This is the planning screen where I am able to change various things, various position before I tell the robot that look everything is okay now you can go ahead and proceed with the operation. So, I have seen here how the knee is balanced whether it is tight, loose, whether the implant is misfitting or it is on the proper direction and poor or proper orientation and it is only when I am completely satisfied that we go back to this checkpoint to ensure that nothing has moved and this is where the actual cutting or removing the bone where the robotic drill starts. So, you will see that I am often asked this question are we in control? So, yes we are in control because we are the ones who tell that look it is okay for this robotic machine to proceed with the cutting and at every time everything that is being done is shown on the screen and you can override at any movement. Once that is done you will see that we are putting it across the range of movement to see whether we have achieved where we started from and we are happy with our um, gaps and the alignment. So, two key issues here alignment and the gap. Now, how do we go about setting up the operation as I have shown it in the uh, animation, but we expose the knee, we do a very limited release here, we remove the ostified. This is where we spend more time than a conventional one by removing the, the bones that are tenting it. We put the checkpoints, we put the threaded pins, connect the error and ensure the viable visibility in all planes. And you will see here in this short video, this is how I am registering, I am painting the uh, tibia bone here along with my team here. So, so you will see that this is a handheld probe that I am using and two up and down markers are there. This is followed by the planning screen and as I said this planning screen is the most important one where you will see that there is some amount of tightness and looseness issue here which we will uh, manage with changing the position of the implant and aligning our cuts in certain direction. This is followed by the bone removal, you will see the pink part is removing more than 2 millimeter of bone and the green is where the bones are less than 2 millimeter and white is when we have achieved the cut and you will see this is how the this is being done. You will see me removing the bone here, see I am using this tool and this tool will only cut the areas where I want it to be cut. You will see this is happening and we are irrigating it simultaneously so that the bone heat that is generated is kind of taken care of. This followed by trialing and validation I am just moving it through the different range and you will see that it is uh, moving it in one particular direction and seeing where it is moving in. There you will see that this is the range of movement here happening Okay, and we will see whatever we have planned whether we have achieved that or not what is the range of movement of this patient and then we can make some final changes if required. Some case example this is a valgus knee in which the knee is moving outward, we have planned this, you will see that there was mismatch in the gap and finally when we reach there it is all balanced out gap. This is how the x-ray look typically in post operative period. Another case uh, a stranded varus knee, this is how the planning was done. We have kind of moved our implant in various direction. You will see that lot of tightness on the medial side you, uh, with the plan. We change the plan again. There is some amount of discrepancy. This is how it looks on the planning stage. And finally, we have juggled it to reach to this stage. And in the end, when we executed the surgery, it's almost a very balanced knee. Again, the case examples, uh, the post-op X-rays, and look very well. We have published in this uh, area and those of who you who, who are interested may want to read this very interesting article titled Robotic Assisted Knee Arthroplasty, the Technique, the Technology and the Transition. And finally coming to a million dollar question, people have asked me in this battle of humans and robot where do we stand and should robot replace us and well there is no right or wrong answer in it, I will leave it at a very uh, uh, very philosophical note here with this advertisement 
and I'm sure that will answer a lot of questions. So it's only worth it if you enjoy it. To conclude, my dear friends, technique, technology, and teamwork. They are all the elements critical for success and optimal patient outcome. Newer technologies help achieve our desired outcomes more efficiently and accurately. Robotics for knee replacement has certainly brought about a paradigm shift in the way we perform our surgeries. It forces an average surgeon to think, plan, and become better. And a good surgeon also an opportunity to introspect and adapt. I can tell you from my personal experience, I've changed the way I look at the knees. for better and i think my understanding on the subject has also gained quite a depth on what i'm doing at the heart of all this is of course the quest for excellence technique common sense and good team are essential they can never replace technology can never replace all these three things no matter what we do and for what i can tell you that picture abhi baki hai dost there is still lot of things that are going to come up this is the version 1 or maybe version 3 that we are dealing with and there are many iterations that's going to come in coming days and last but not least the best way to predict future is to create it i'll call upon all my fellow surgeons to be a part of this revolution and to contribute because it's only when the end user have the skin in the game that the technology develops much further i thank you all for your attention and uh, welcome any questions that any of you may have in this regard thank you very much